Be sure to check out Watch Mojo's We'll Do It Live this Friday at 12.30 p.m. and click the link below to see all the episodes. These canon characters deserve the big screen treatment. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Star Wars TV characters that need to be in the movies. The Empire is here because of us. We'll deal with the consequences. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at characters from the animated series, Star Wars Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels, and selecting those who would fit best making the jump to a live-action Star Wars film with substantial screen time. In this war, a step ahead of us, Dooku always seems. Number 10, Ezra Bridger, Star Wars Rebels. Bye, guys. This young force wielder has been the subject of much speculation. Given his young age and the time period in which Rebels is set, many feel there's a strong chance that Ezra will serve to bridge the gap between the series and film. I don't know where you get your delusions, Buckethead. I work alone. With the addition of Benicio Del Toro to the cast of The Last Jedi, some are quick to predict that this was an adult Ezra, who had perhaps even fathered Rey. Unfortunately, director Ryan Johnson has shot this theory down. Given Snoke's mysterious origins, Ezra's struggles with the temptations of the dark side have led some to speculate that he could become the supreme leader. One way or another, let's bring him to the supreme screen. I don't fear you. Then you will die braver than most. <laughs> Number 9, Garazeb Zeb Aurelios, Star Wars Rebels. It's okay. It's okay. Ah, oh, Caravas. Zeb is one of those characters that you can't help but love. With his brusque demeanor and no-nonsense attitude, he takes a little time to warm up to, but underneath that lies true compassion and a heart of gold. He's the type of person that any crew or group would be lucky to have. Don't worry, if I find any sign of him, you'll hear about it. Of course, he's also incredibly competent, bringing combat skills, tactical planning, and a certain ruthlessness to the cause. I don't know what to do with it! Whatever you're doing, stop it! Despite the galaxy being full of different species, the Star Wars films have a tendency to focus on human characters, except for comic relief, bit parts, or villain roles. So seeing this Lasat join Chewie as a non-human central character would certainly be refreshing. Ah, oh, your friends did find you. Like I said they would. Number 8, Cad Bane, Star Wars The Clone Wars. I got business with the Senate. How about you fellas step aside? As much as we'd love to see our animated heroes make the jump, Star Wars has always been equally known for its iconic villains. Even if the role remained a minor one, it would be great to see this Western-inspired Duros join his fellow bounty hunters on the big screen. He was, after all, once considered the galaxy's most effective bounty hunter. Excuse the interruption. As I was saying, bounty hunter, I have need of your services. I'm listening. After debuting in the season finale of The Clone Wars first season, he played the central villain of a three-episode arc to kickstart season two, during which time he stole a holocron from the Jedi Temple and kidnapped Force-sensitive children. All to say that he's a formidable opponent. If you're gonna kill him, do it like a man. Number seven, Kanan Jarrus, Star Wars Rebels. You must use all your skills together. Ready position. This Jedi has undergone quite the transformation over the course of Rebels. Jarrus was just a Padawan when the Jedi Order fell, and in the wake of having his world torn apart, the headstrong young man became cynical, rebelling against any type of structure. By the will of the Force, Kanan Jarrus, you may rise. While attaining the rank of Jedi Knight on Lothal, Kanan began to mature noticeably. However, the biggest personality change came when he was blinded. This loss of sight has drastically changed his perspective, resulting in a closer relationship with the Force. Kanan would make an excellent mentor to a big screen Jedi in training, or an advisor to anyone in the Resistance. I'm not sure this is such a good idea. Number 6, Grand Admiral Thrawn, aka Mithra Narodo, Star Wars Rebels. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. Honestly, people have been asking to see Grand Admiral Thrawn on the big screen for decades. He was created by Timothy Zahn as the main antagonist of the Thrawn trilogy in the early 1990s, which served as the continuation of Luke Skywalker's story post-Return of the Jedi. It might be beneficial to hear what you have to say about our Imperial occupation. Thrawn was an unparalleled military strategist who presented a unique challenge to the fledgling New Republic. However, since the acquisition of Star Wars by Disney, Thrawn has been retconned to fit into the time period before the original trilogy, rather than after. Even with the switch-up and his diminished importance, however, he remains a truly inspired Star Wars villain. Maybe an anthology film? Let's make it happen, Disney! Indeed I do, Agent Callus. Number 5, Savage Oppress. Star Wars The Clone Wars. And what of the Jedi? <clears throat> the Phantom Menace remains the worst-reviewed live-action theatrical Star Wars film ever released. Would you like to discuss it with the hut? But for all of its relative shortcomings, The Phantom Menace got one thing very right, Darth Maul. 
Given his popularity across the board, it seems likely that cinema-goers would be equally enamored with his brother, Savage Opress. What do you know about it? Opress, a yellow-skinned Dathomirian Zabrak, was actually the one to find Darth Maul years after his dissection at the hands of Obi-Wan. A walking force of destruction, and less predictable than his brother, we'd love to see him wreak havoc on the big screen. Given that he died in circa 20 BBY, however, it'd need to be a standalone film. Brother, I am an unworthy apprentice. I'm not like you. Number 4. Sabine Wren, Star Wars Rebels Sabine. My name's Sabine. More Mandalorians? Yes, please. Despite playing third or fourth chair in the villain hierarchy of the original trilogy, Boba Fett garnered a lot of attention. Since his creation, the history of the warrior race known as the Mandalorians has greatly expanded. In Star Wars Rebels, we meet Sabine Wren, a female Mandalorian with a storied history. There's been talks of a Boba Fett anthology film, but we'd also be happy to see Ren take the lead in a story focusing on the Mandalorian culture. One thing I know is that my friends make the impossible possible. It sure would be nice to see the Darksaber on screen, especially with this explosive character wielding it. Who wouldn't want to witness a whole Mandalorian clan go into battle? Well, that hardly narrows it down. If you're a Star Wars fan, be sure to subscribe and check out our We'll Do It Live Star Wars special, live on our YouTube channel, Friday, December 15th at 12.30pm Eastern. We've got polls, trivia games, and special guest Greg Grunberg to talk about playing Snap Wexley from Star Wars. And if you missed the live show, be sure to check it out at the link in the description below. We'll do it live! Number 3, Captain Rex, Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. My name's Rex, but you'll call me Captain or Sir. In the prequel trilogy, we learned that the clones who fought in the aptly named Clone Wars were duplicates of Jango Fett. Aesthetically interchangeable and loyal to a fault, they were an intentionally homogenous bunch. But despite his genetics, CT-7567, better known as Rex, managed to stand out from the bunch, becoming his own man. Thankfully, before Order 66 was given, Rex removed his inhibitor chip and thus spared himself the horror of carrying out that order. After playing a crucial role in the Clone Wars, he would later go on to aid the crew of the Ghost in Star Wars Rebels. If Saw Gerrera could make the jump to the big screen, why not Rex? Saw. Sonic Blaster. Number 2. Asajj Ventress. Star Wars The Clone Wars. I don't fear you, Jedi. If there's one planet we'd like to see get some live-action screen time, it's Dathomir. The planet that gave us Darth Maul, Savage Opress, and this notorious Night Sister. Asajj Ventress has led a complicated life. She's been a slave, a Jedi Padawan, a bounty hunter, a Sith assassin, the lover and partner of a Jedi, and, all in all, an absolutely fascinating, complex addition to the Star Wars canon. The undead will clear us a path right to Grievous. With her dual curved lightsabers, goth aesthetic, and aggressive demeanor, she'd be a pleasure to watch. If any one of her stories were to be brought to the big screen, it would have to be the epic in-canon story, Dark Disciple. Whatever it is, it better be worth all this effort. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I am Agent Callus of the Imperial Security Bureau. You said this was a routine op. What happened down there? Kenobi, you look worse for wear. How's Temple like? Number one, Ahsoka Tano. Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. R2, set up the scanner, modulate for incoming mystery weapons. This character is arguably the biggest deal to emerge from either of these two animated series to the Star Wars canon. The precocious and spunky Jedi Padawan of young Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tana grew a great deal over the course of the Clone Wars before re-emerging as a grown woman in Star Wars Rebels. The apprentice lives. <laughs> She complicates Anakin's turn to the dark side, both in the lead-up to his betrayal and in the aftermath of him becoming Darth Vader. After the end of Season 2, a confrontation with Vader left her fate ambiguous, but we'd love to see this emotionally loaded and complex character reappear on the big screen, where she so rightfully deserves to be seen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.